Beyond fans, welcome back to one of our patented commentaries. And when I say patented, I say patented. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, we are doing a season one episode, and I know I'm about to hear the groans, so please stop. <laughs> yeah, not the um, greatest episode, this one. Although it actually, of the quote-unquote bad episodes of season one, it's not that bad. It's been a while since I've seen it, so uh, I'll look forward to... Uh... Yeah, I look forward to making up my mind on that. Yep. So <laughs> I can't remember the be... last time I saw this one. Yep. Uh, this is going to be episode 17 of season one. That's Bird Woman of the Swamps. Uh, it has a very famous guest star in it. And that would be uh, the man playing Mr. Hogan. He was actually Dano from the original Hawaii Five O. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, I can't say that I'm super familiar with him. You know what I'm like with my uh, blind spots when it comes to TV series. But uh, yeah, I'll look forward to you. You have to point him out for me when we get there. Yep. And also uh, the gentleman who made multiple appearances throughout the series, uh, the one who played Mr. Corrigan and Out of Luck, and the one who played the uh, the uh, henchman of the Sovereign who gets murdered off screen. <laughs> Uh, is Not the bearded yes. one, the other one. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I like yeah, the that. The bearded guy. one had to watch it. Yeah. Well, oh, I, I can't talk about roads not taken right now, but I, I just got to say I love that moment. The fact that the camera is put going in on the face of the guy with the beard. We don't even see this hovering kill the guy, but because you see the guy go like that, it's so much worse. Your imagination does it for you. Yeah. Sorry. It, 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 it's it's it's, a, it's an old school of thought when it comes to film, and I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with this, having studied film in, in school. When you don't see something, it makes it that much more terrifying. Mm. Absolutely. You know? it's, it's one That's of the why things when, the... when George Lucas did the special edition of Empire Strikes Back, he screwed it up by showing us the Wampa. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's... it's... The less said about the special editions, the better. <laughs> some things they did were fine, but, you know, mm. some things he went a little too far. Yeah. but Some it, things just didn't need to be changed, frankly, did they? So Yeah. Uh, so just to let you guys know, as usual, there will be no pieces of the episode in the video. You're not going to see any of it. This is not a replacement of the actual episode. Um, you will need to have your physical copy or a streaming copy, wherever you get it from. Yeah. And it'll be we'll right up, it up there, though. Yeah, we'll have a little bit of a, we'll have a small, very grainy version up there just so you can keep in track with us. It's not a replacement for the episode. Yeah. Um, it's literally made of like little white dots, you know, it's so heavily filtered and there's no audio as well. So that helps. <laughs> yep. Uh, so uh, we're going to, we're going to count you in with a three, two, one play. All right. So everybody get ready, get your, get your uh, discs ready, get your streaming version ready. This is season one episode 17 bird woman of the swamps okay three two one play and here we go yeah yeah i don't know bird woman of the swamps it's one of those episodes that i always feel like maybe gets lumped in with invisible people just because just I, I don't know I don't even quite know why it's just they're two of the worst episodes potentially but like I say I've not seen this one in a very long time so maybe I'll actually like it <laughs> yeah I'll... it it is a good episode it's got a great a great premise you know and it shows Clark and TJ actually you know as reporters again absolutely and we start with this great scene of the uh james MacArthur. that's that's the actor who plays uh mr hogan in this hmm. so it's that guy with the helmet <laughs> yep okay yeah i can't say i recognize him but i'll take your word for it that he's uh he's very good in hawaii 5 -0.
and it's directed by Riza Espadai, who went on to direct the uh, the soup the uh, Scooby Doo movies. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Very cool. I wonder if that means that James Gunn has seen Superboy. I've tweeted him a few times asking if he's ever seen it, but never got a response. No. Response. <laughs> no. Let's face it, he probably gets hundreds of tweets at him every day, you know. Yeah. Tell us this, tell us that. And yeah, I am very excited for Superman, you know, the new movie. It's not Superman Legacy anymore, but you know. I suppose it is about time we had a movie just called Superman, since Christopher Reeves was technically Superman the movie. Yeah. Except for in the title sequence, I suppose. Yeah. All right, here's the problem that I have with this actress. While she does play this 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 character very well, mm. she doesn't look like she's Native American, and she's supposed to be. Mm. It is always annoying when that happens. Have they put... They haven't actually browned her up, though, have they? I For a second there, it looked like they had. I think they did oh. a little bit. This episode hasn't aged particularly well then. <laughs> Still, you know, as a Star Trek fan, I can't really complain. I mean, let's face it, look at the Klingons. <laughs> the original Klingons. <laughs> yeah. Although, let's face it, there aren't any uh, bronze-coloured human beings that look shiny like that. They almost look metallic on their skin in the show, but I think that's just because it was so shiny, The wet, you know the oily uh, face paint they use. Yep. And it's interesting. They're talking about, you know, this, this, uh, this project for the homeless that uh, Hogan is building. And I can see the, 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 the point that uh, the, the bird woman is saying that the land of her people is being taken again. Hmm. You can kind of see where she's coming from, but maybe that's why people, like I've seen people connect this to invisible people. Maybe they're houses for the people that are living on the beach. That could be. I would laugh if this is actually a sequel to that episode. Anybody that was uh, involved with season one, if you can tell us. <laughs> I doubt it, but uh, yes. And of the course, episode... Mark... Clark doing the most 80s thing ever. There was no need for that skateboard, was there? You know. No, but he had to take it so that so that TJ he just leaves it in the road. Yeah. Probably got crushed by a car later that day. I love that shot of him lifting the crane. I've seen the photos of that. They've I think there was a magazine actually promoting yep, the show yep. early on yeah that, that was the, that was the uh the main scene that was in the comic scene magazine where they were talking about the, nice. uh, the show i do have to wonder though because obviously we know that newton got injured a few times on the set that seemed like quite a dangerous thing to do really shooting that I want, you know, I wonder sometimes. Every time I watch a season one episode, I'm looking out for the day that the injury may have happened. Gotta admit, I. I do love crows and ravens. I just, mm. they're so bloody clever that you can actually train them to. I know you can train lots of animals, but they're particularly clever. <laughs> I don't know why I'm talking about a bird, but there you go. You're right, though. She does not look even slightly Native American. But I suppose there are lots of different Native American tribes. I don't know what they all look like, you know. Yeah. But she just, she just. It doesn't. It's it's not quite right, is it? <laughs> yeah, she just doesn't Bless look you. quite quite right. Yeah. 
I wonder if they hired the same, you know, fraudster that they hired for Star Trek Voyager to uh, consult for all of Chakotay's stuff. The guy that was proven a fraud like 15 years before the show and they still hired him <laughs> just because he was still famous. Mm. I'm only going by what Robert Beltran has said about him. Yeah, well, let, let, let's not bring Robert Beltran up because some of the things he said over the last True, few years right. kind of... Uh, Actually, out. yeah, that's fair enough. This past year, he's... Uh, yeah, especially during the strike, you know. I was Maybe just talking he figures... about what he, oh, what what he said talking? about the, the, uh, the, the uh, Prime Directive being a piece of shit. <laughs> oh, I, I don't ever pay attention to stuff like that, you know. <laughs> the only thing I will say about that is it's it is funny though how the prime directive is usually only ever brought up in a conversation about why just this once we can't do it or we're not going to do it this time we're going to break it you know yeah that's probably why a lot of people don't have a lot of faith in the prime directive sorry everyone back to superboy yeah and the way James MacArthur is playing this character of Hogan he he's very charming he's very you know he's playing it like i'm, mm. I'm i understand the pro the problem of of the native americans but i'm trying to help the people who are homeless here and as we'll get to see that that's all just a mask isn't it always <laughs> in superboy no one's ever quite as nice as they appear except Clark. except Except for Clark, and maybe um, Warren Eckworth, but then he died. <laughs> yeah, so we really didn't even get to meet Warren Eckworth for very Not long. Not that much, no. So, saw him at the, the demonstration for the gun, and then that was it. And then just a scene right before he gets murdered. I'll tell you who else, though. The little old lady that stopped Metallo. Mm. <laughs> Granted, we don't know anything about her, but that was a good scene. Oh, and this is so great. He's sending one of his thugs to go and kill the uh, bird woman of the swamps. Mm. Don't think that'll end well for him. And that is one thing I quite like about season one. Clark is, uh, he's pretty naive at times. Like, he's not quite got that gut instinct that comes from, you know, where we know his life will like, go to. He trusts people a little bit easier. But, I mean, I guess trusting people is part of Superman's whole thing, isn't it, you know? Yeah, it's just... As he as he works in the, in the field of journalism, he starts to learn that, yeah, trusting people is easy. It's just... Believing them, that's, that's the problem. Hmm. He's a little bit more cynical, but outwardly he's still gives them the benefit of the doubt here he's he's just not he's he's very naive here and that 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 is that is that is a problem i mean he is still in his first year of being a hero isn't he so i guess it comes with the territory he's not quite learnt the ropes yet What would have I mean, really she's... helped? What cool. really would have helped her with the the Native American look is maybe having some turquoise in that necklace. I don't know enough about Native Americans. So. Neither do I, but I know that a lot of Native American tribes have t turquoise in their in their uh, their jewelry. Hmm. Yeah, that might have helped. It's a shame that they want her to look so much older because even just darkening her hair would have probably made a difference. Yeah. Obviously, I know that Native Americans go grey too, but it's maybe from a distance she would have looked a little bit more Native American if she had dark hair. 
I don't think she gives a bad performance though. She's relatively good in it. I think I know what my biggest problem with this episode is though at the moment. It just didn't have enough money. Mm. I would have liked to have seen like what where what does she actually live in? Like does she have like a little shack? Like yeah. I'm picturing like Aunt Cassandra's house. <laughs> Like something proper run down, like in uh, that episode. But it would have been nice to see that. It would have been nice if when Superboy is being affected there at the swamp, that it's not just John rolling around on the grass, you know? Getting the costume dirty. That annoys me too, yeah. I'm sure they cleaned it, but you know. If they had a little bit more money, maybe they would have had him on the wires. They could have him sort of being thrown around like, by the magic or something just yeah had some good flying shots in this episode but yeah and overall you know the this the story is a little bit better than invisible people so, oh it's and... definitely better yeah so go on. <laughs> and also the the acting you know mm -hmm. i mean we don't have a, a slow speed chase in a in a van in this one, which is also good. Yeah. And the funny thing is, you know, they sped that footage up. So how slow were they going? Because that's all they do with low budget car chase scenes. They just speed up the footage usually. <laughs> or they skip yeah. every other frame. That's how they used to do it. Ooh. Oh dear. <laughs> and Clark just about, you know, he losing nearly punched here. a hole. <laughs> nearly punched a hole in the steering wheel. Oh. Yeah, he's and almost almost letting it slip that he's Superboy. Yeah. I like the fact that because obviously he's younger, he's not quite got a handle on his temper just yet. Like obviously a Superman, that sort of thing wouldn't get to him in quite the same way. Which when he becomes Superman, yeah, he does have a temper, which people seem to forget. And there he is. Occasionally. There's our our uh Frequent extra. Indeed. Who I always think looks a bit like Adam West. I don't know why. Old Adam West, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Superman gets angry, obviously, but he's, it takes a lot more than that to get him pissed off. Like, <laughs> Yeah, he's got a bit of a slow burn. Yeah. You've got to really do something bad for Superman to get pissed at you. Which is why it doesn't happen very often, because it makes more dramatic emphasis, you know, when it does happen. It's like, holy shit, you got Superman made it mad at you? What the hell did you do? And now we're finding out exactly what Hogan's up to. Hmm. Using substandard materials in the building of the uh, the the apartment complex. Yeah. I always like this guy when he's in an episode. He's one of those actors that is just always fun to look for. And now the gentlemen are looking at the materials that are actually out there, even though they've been told that it was, uh, they stopped using that material. It's all still sitting there. Hmm. And I will say this, quite a realistic story for Superboy. You can totally imagine. I bet it's happened up whole mess of times, you know.
this is obviously why they couldn't show what she actually lives in, like little cabin or whatever, because they've got so many flying and special effect shots in this episode. Yeah, she does a good performance. She's not got very much to actually do, really. She's only in a few scenes throughout the episode, but... I hope they didn't darken her skin for this episode. I really do. I lo I love that 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 moment where he says, "Think of me as a friend of the court." Yeah, I believe they even used that line a couple of times in some of the promos and TV spots and stuff at the end of other episodes. Can't remember which episode it is, but there's one episode that ends with a tv spot for like three different episodes it just says like upcoming on this season or something and it's just that's like the, one of the first lines that they say in it i think for good reason i don't know where they thought they were going <laughs> <laughs> just run up to a fence with barbed wire on the top and just stand there. Yeah, and and the way the uh, that fence that he threw on Furls is a little unrealistic. Yeah, funny though. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure James Gunn has seen this series before. I'm sure of it. I mean, you know, assuming that they had a good working relationship with the Scooby-Doo movies, maybe. Mm. I doubt we'll see any references, though. Would be nice to get another Eckworth Industries Easter egg or something. That would be fun. It's just it's quite a nice, easy thing that you can hide in the background, isn't it? Yeah. Honestly, I think this episode ends a little... It should have ended like mm. a few seconds earlier. Yeah, as, as nice as it is to see them wish Mark Kent a happy birthday, what it doesn't have anything to do with the episode. It just feels like they needed to fill an extra 30 seconds, maybe. I yeah. don't know. It's, it's, it feels a bit out of place, considering that I don't think... Unless I... You know, unless we were talking when it was mentioned, I don't remember Mark Kent's birthday ever coming up in the episode. It like, did. Were we just talking Clark, over it? Oh, it yeah, did. we were talking over it. Oh, keeps happening with our commentaries. What can you do? Oh, so at least it did come up. But I mean, did it need to be there, really? Yeah. I don't know why they couldn't do Mark Kent's birthday as part of one of the episodes where he goes back to Smallville. You know, maybe that's the reason he's gone home, and then you could do Troubled Waters and. Phantom of the Third Division and all of that. Like, that would have made yeah. more sense, perhaps. 
Phantom of the Third Division, which is only a few episodes away from this. Yeah. So they could have just held off a little bit. Wished her a happy birthday in person. But, oh well, what can you do? Uh, <laughs> I did enjoy this episode. Um, it's definitely better than I remember. Uh, as I said earlier on, I think the main problem I have with it is mostly just budgetary. It's, I don't know, I think it could have done with just a little bit more money so you can actually show what she's living in so you don't think that she's just a woman that just is out in the swamps with, like, no roof over her head or anything like that. I don't know why I'm focusing on that, but it's just like, where does she live exactly? <laughs> well, we, never we, see do, it. we do see, like, the, the, the we'll, we'll call it the storefront of the uh, mm. of the of the, the little straw shack she's living in, but that's I it. I don't think that's yeah. But I, mean, I, I would I would have liked to have seen something. You know, if she's living in the swamp and that's actually her home, you'd think it'd be a little bit more. If that makes yeah. sense, that's the problem when we do our commentary. Sometimes I like we're talking over key information and I just miss it. So maybe next time I'll watch the episode and then we'll do the commentary. So. Uh, it's a bit more fresh in my memory next time. Um, yeah. But no, part well, of it's fun just to watch it again for the, like, you know, first time in a long time. Sometimes it's fun to record that because you see our yeah, unfiltered, you know, genuine reactions to it. Yeah, I, I, I like this episode. You know, I don't absolutely love it, but I like it. Um, it is trying to do a lot of what they tried to do throughout season one, which was to have topical episodes. You know, mm. we're talking about the homeless. And yes, you you probably are correct. It probably is like, you know, an unofficial sequel to Invisible People. Mm. Um, Which is interesting because it's one of the very few examples you can point to of some light serialization in Superboy. Because everything else is basically episodic. Apart from relationships maybe with Bizarro or uh, obviously Metallo as well. But I mean... Unless it's a recurring character, there's just not really any continuity most of the time. Let's face it, once uh, once Peterson left the show, I, I don't think he was mentioned more than a couple of times. Which is twice. Twice, yeah. Not enough. Not enough. But um, um, but yeah. you know, it, it does have a have have a you know, it's a very topical episode in the, in the fact that you know they're talking about both the homeless and the loss of the wetlands. You know, they build they build the uh, the homeless uh, the, the apartment buildings for the homeless. You know, the cheap housing, uh, but they have to do it on the wetlands. And as Lana points out earlier in the episode when they're talking about it, you know, once those wetlands are gone, they're gone. You can't get them back. Yeah. So, and Clark points it's out. Still, you know, let's fight. So gone. <laughs> yeah, and Clark points out that you know environmentalism and you know, construction have to learn how to get along. You know, yes, we need to have 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 housing, but we also need to have the environment. You know, yeah. And it, it, and let's face it, 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 saving like wetlands is something that is still a topical thing. You know, you still hear about stuff like that because. I mean, Arrested Development had a whole subplot about saving the wetlands, so it's obviously yeah. at least as recent as when that show was released. But uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the, they don't try to say which side is in the right here, you know, and they they leave it to the viewer, and that that's a good thing. Yeah, because I I hate it when ep, when shows get very preachy, you know, saying, "Oh, well, you you you, you can't do this." They're, they're pointing out that there's shades of gray. Do we need housing for the homeless? Yes. Do we need the wetlands? Yes. Mm. But as Clark puts yeah. it, they've got to learn to work together in order to, to solve both problems. You know? Yeah. I mean, basically just saying, you know, as far as this problem goes, it's just not that cut and dry. You know, it's just, yeah, both sides have a point. And isn't that always the way with life? And I think that I think you're absolutely right on the money there because let's face it, there's a lot of shows that do get a bit preachy and they tell you exactly what their message wants to be. And even some of the worst of Star Trek, like even early next generation and stuff, there were some episodes that literally all they were doing was preaching. Yeah. And 
they didn't do it particularly well. You know, it wouldn't have been such a problem if it was a better episode sometimes. But uh, I, I really yeah, think it's that just... when, 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 the, when Bernard S. Kahn wrote this episode, he was kind of channeling the best of TOS here. And, Absolutely. I'll use, I'll, and my argument here is the episode of Private Little War, which was basically their allegory for the Vietnam War. And there was that 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 sequence between Bones and, and McCoy, where they're talking about you know giving weapons to the villagers, uh, to, no to the to the hill people, and McCoy says, "So you're talking about gun running? Essentially, that's what he's saying. He says, "Well, no, I'm trying to equalize everything out. The Prime Directive mm-hmm. has already been violated by the Klingons, so we've got to put everything back on an even footing." And then McCoy says, you're talking about condemning these people to massacre after massacre after massacre, you know, and, and Kirk says, well, what would you have me do? And that's, that's the best way, you know, there's no right or wrong answer because they're both cut and dry. You know, that's, that's life. Life is shades of gray. Unfortunately, you know, it would be lovely if everything was black and white, but it's not. Yeah, would it be lovely um, if everything was sunshines and rainbows? Absolutely. You know, it's it's also quite similar to that episode in early TNG with um, it's the eugenics episode with the perfect. I think it's just called the perfect society or something. They refer yeah. to it as, and don't they have a very similar ending with that as well, where Picard refuses to help them or something? Oh no, that's a, it's a different one. It's the one where there's the two civilizations, and one of them's got the other one hooked on drugs, and they're addicted. And it's it, you know they're trying to sort out the thing, and by the end, Picard's just like he manages to find a way to not help them. But it's I don't Although think it's done anywhere near as good as Private get, Little War. Get to be a little preachy when when Tasha is having the conversation with Wesley about drugs. <sighs> But you know that was probably a network note, you know. It's it's yeah. always the way. It's I remember um hearing about the episode in Buffy. There's one episode of Buffy during the uh the college year, and uh it's just called Beer Bad is the name of the episode, and it's infamous because it's the anti drinking episode. It's just like the worst PSA to stop people drinking you've ever seen in your life. Yeah. But- <laughs> You know, overall, this is this is a very good episode. I mean, yeah, we, we do have a little bit of an issue with the actress they have playing the bird woman. You know, she's fine. Like, I just don't like the makeup choice. And I don't think she looks Native American enough. Like, could they not have hired an actual Native American actress for that? I mean, yeah, I'm sure I, there I, were enough of them that wanted work, you know, but they keep hiring people that aren't Native this, American. Yeah, this is one of the reasons why this episode does not age very well. Because if this episode oh, yeah. was made now... They would have gotten a Native American oh, actress. Absolutely. Yeah. It's just, yeah. It, one, they would have definitely got a Native American actress, but the fact that that element has aged so poorly in an episode that's trying to be topical definitely works against it, unfortunately. And it's just it seems like, you know, like with Invisible People and like with so many other episodes that we've talked about. I think it's just one of those ones where the execution just didn't quite work. And I think I don't even want to blame the director because I don't know how many projects they've worked on before this episode. You know, I know, I know that Riza did do a few episodes of Superboy before this. So this isn't their first. Yeah. Okay. Whether it's, it's their first before you know, this is their yeah. first, you know, or the overall Superboy gig is their first gig, period. I don't know. Hmm. But I mean, you never know. I mean, let's face it, with shows like this, it always takes a season to find your footing, to really work out what the show's got to be. You know, just nobody knows what they're doing on the first season of a TV show. Like, it's, it's the same. It's one of the reasons that Christopher Eccleston left Doctor Who is just he his working relationship with the producers and writers just fell apart because nobody knew what they were doing on that first year and there was a lot of dangerous stunts and stuff that he didn't think were necessary i I agree with him but i obviously nobody really knows the full story except for him but uh he's not telling well plus fair enough it's it's his 
Yeah. He and I, his yeah, story. Plus too. the fact that they were originally, they originally wanted David Tennant and BBC. Had said yeah, no. that's the story. Apparently the BBC didn't want to or something, even though David Tennant had already starred in a couple of shows for them in the past. But yeah, I love Christopher Eccleston as the doctor. I, I wish he'd done another season. Thankfully, he's doing them for Big Finish, though, you know, audio only, but still, it's new Christopher Eccleston as the Doctor, so well, yeah. what's bad about that? <laughs> really gone off topic at the end of this one, but I don't know, the themes of this episode sort of sent us off in multiple different directions. Uh, indeed, a indeed. Fun one to edit together, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, anyway, thank you all so much for oh, watching. We didn't give it a, a rating. Oh, oh, you're right, yeah. Uh, oh, on the season one scale. I, I would say know. this I, is about a 7.5. I was going to go for 6.5 to a 7. But 7... 7.25? Right. the difference. We'll go, yeah, we'll, we'll okay. go 7.25. It has, it has a great premise. The acting is better. The script is better than, than Invisible People, definitely. Um, it's, mm. it's set up very well. Um, it just has a few things that bring it down a little bit. And unfortunately, you know, that's just a recurring thing with season one and season two. Actually, every season of Superboy, the bad episodes, they always have things going against it. And it's sometimes it's fun when we watch it just to try and work out exactly what happened. But obviously, we're just guessing all the time. So, yeah, if anybody yep. out there actually was involved with this episode in any way whatsoever, and you can tell us, like, you know, what? happened exactly when they were making this we'd love to hear it so if you want to leave us a comment you can uh i doubt i doubt the director of this episode will uh, see this video but you never know maybe they like this one yeah hopefully we've not insulted their directing too much but uh they've come no, a long I, way I, since think, then, I think i think the directing it. on the episode was great it's just you know some of the choices were bad and you know, using an actress for a Native American character who's not Native American. Mm. And let's face it, directors on TV don't always get to cast. Usually, there's a casting director, and they just they come in, they know who they're working with because they're ready. You know, it's, yeah. it's not like the director for each individual episode is going out casting it because let's face it, with TV, you know. Directors are often on, they're all, all over the place. They're on different shows all the time. Like half the time, like I mean, I think Jonathan Frakes said that he's directed so many episodes of Star Trek, but he's never watched them. <laughs> he wasn't in the edit because he's moved on to his next job because he's a busy man. Yep. So it's the uh, you know, it makes it makes sense. You know, I don't think that's always the way it works, but obviously it does sometimes. Um yep. but yeah. Seven point two five, I think that's fair enough. Uh if you enjoyed this episode, if you think maybe we're a little bit too harsh on it or maybe we weren't harsh enough, you know, let us know in the comments and, uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Not sure what we can recall yet, as always, but we'll decide next week. Goodbye.